So this is a YouTube video illustrating the fundamental properties of cyclic voltammetry. And uh, what I'm showing in this Excel tutorial is the important processes that produce uh, a CV trace. So the display that you would see if you make measurements using uh, a cyclic voltammetry instrument is current plotted on the uh, y-axis, um, where the zero current will be in the middle, and cathodic currents will be positive. So those are currents where the analyte is being reduced at the electrode, and anodic currents will be um, negative. I've also shown concentration on this axis, um, and the concentration in this case is the iron-3 species that's being reduced, and the iron two species that's being oxidized. The x-axis in, in both cases is electrode potential, so this is the potential of the working electrode, and so we'll start our CV trace up at 0.4 volts, we'll scan toward negative potentials, I've set the uh, E0 for the reaction of interest of, at, to 0 0.25 volts, and what we see is as we scan toward negative potentials, an increase in the cathodic current reaching a peak at potentials slightly below the standard potential for the reaction. So this is the electron transfer region where electron transfer controls the current. We reach a peak, the current decreases. This is the region where diffusion limits the current. We reverse our trace, come back in the other direction, we're continuing to decrease the iron-3 concentration, so the current continues to decrease, and then we get a peak in the negative currents, uh, or in the anodic direction, as the iron-2 that's built up at the surface of the electrode gets oxidized back to iron-3. So let's look at this trace in a little more detail, and to generate this trace, I've created a computer model of the two important CV processes. So the first part of the CV trace to consider is the electron transfer rate. So let's start up here. We're going to start at 0.4 volts. We're going to scan in um, the negative direction at 60 millivolts per second. We're going to have a E0 of 0 0.25. Uh, the area is the area of my electrode. I'll need that to estimate the current. And delta T is the time interval between each step in my Excel spreadsheet. So I will start by using time. Time is simply calculated as the, the, the value before it um, plus the time step. The potential now starts at 0.4 and it decreases uh, <coughs> um, at B12. B12 is the time times B4, which is my scan rate in millivolts per second, and divide by 1,000 because I, I'm using units of volts. So from this voltage, I can calculate the rate constant. So this is the expression for um, the heterogeneous electron transfer rate, and it's equal to the K0 exponent alpha N Faraday's constant RT times the difference between the cell potential and the standard potential. So you'll see that this difference drives the value of this exponent. And so what you observe is a very low reduction rate at potentials more positive than the standard reduction potential and an exponential increase in uh, reaction rates, in this case electron transfer rates, as you reach potentials more negative than the standard potential. So right around 0.25, this has a value of 100, and then it goes shooting up to values of almost 10,000. So this is really describing um, <clears throat> the ability of the electron to overcome the activation barrier for electron transfer. So that explains this part of the curve, and you can see that exponential increase. Up here, the electrode is too positive to 
have any significant reduction of iron 3, but as we move toward more reducing conditions, that rate constant starts to increase, and iron 3 reduction increases dramatically. However, as you decrease the iron concentration, um, the iron concentration at the surface of the electrode must decrease, and it can be reestablished from by diffusion from the bulk solution. So I have modeled diffusion in a series of boxes, seven of them, and we can think of these as boxes as moving away from the surface of the electrode. So our flux is going to go from the bulk, which I've called N, end toward the electrode surface, which I've referred to as box one. And so um, let's see how this, this will work. Um, box two, yeah, let's go box two. Box two is going to be equal to the concentration of the, of, uh, the step above it minus the flux going this way plus the flux coming in the other direction. And each of these cells follows the same pattern. So this box, J, uh, box 5, is equal to the box above it minus the amount that I lost fluxing in this direction. So it's the diffusion coefficient times J11 minus I11 plus the amount of flux from the box to its right. <clears throat> so this diffusion has the effect of depleting the concentration at the surface of the electrode. And you can see this depletion propagating outward. And to simulate this correctly, I had to use about 3,000 rows. So you'd have to scale down a long way. But you can see that it's starting to deplete the surface of the electrode. And in fact, at this point, we're down to, yeah, we're still way high. We're almost 0 0.01. We're almost at the bulk. Okay, now we're down to 68% uh, of the bulk concentration. And now we're down to 40% of the bulk concentration. So my plot here shows the concentration of iron 3 at the surface of the electrode. And as electron transfer rates go up, the iron 3 concentration goes down. <clears throat> now, as the iron 3 goes down, the iron 2 goes up, and I modeled the flux of iron 2 over here. So I have now seven boxes again, and the iron 2 starts at zero. But as I reduce iron 3 to iron 2, my iron 2 concentration goes up, and I've modeled these fluxes in essentially the same way. The flux here is T11 minus G4, T11 minus S11 and G4U11 plus G4U11, T11. So this takes care of my diffusion. The big difference is that the um, end member for the iron 3 is the bulk iron 3 concentration. The end member for the iron 2 is 0. So as we produce iron 2 at the surface of the electrode, it diffuses away. And it's that diffusion away that gives us this characteristic shape on the CV trace. All right, well, there's some other things that I did in this, in this spreadsheet that's worth showing. One is that in cell one, I not only have the diffusion terms, but I have the electron transfer terms. So this F11, one minus exponent, D11, B8, that is the first order decay it's the amount of iron 3 that was reduced at the surface of the electrode using the rate constant at that potential. This term is the amount of iron 2 that was oxidized at the electrode, because at oxidizing conditions, any iron 2 that's there is going to get reoxidized quickly. So I had to add that back in, and then I have the diffusion term. So the first column is a little more complicated um, for both the iron 3 and the iron 2. But notice this is the same uh, R11, R11 times 1 minus exponent P11. The difference is that iron 2 oxidation rates are really fast out here, where iron 3 reduction rates are really fast 
out here. So over the whole CV trace, I modeled this electron transfer rate and using the same, same form here as we did for, for iron 3. So this is iron 2 going to iron 3. This is the rate of iron 3 going to iron 2. Now, there's no reason these two rates have to be identical. I have just modeled them as being equal to each other. So when you incorporate the electron transfer rates and the diffusion of iron away, the accumulation of iron at the surface of the electrode and the diffusion of iron to away from the electrode, you end up getting this very uh, nice simulation of the CV trace. And to be quite honest, I'm amazed it works as well as it does. There are three factors that come into play in defining the shape of this curve. One is the speed at which you're scanning, and that's really controlled by this term, this delta T. We'll come back to that in a second. Second is concentration. If I double the concentration, I should double the current. 0 0.02. Notice my current now is at around 5 microamps. Double the concentration. It goes to 10 microamps. No surprise, that follows nicely. Notice my iron 3 is now 0.02, and my iron 2 builds up at the surface of the electrode to just about 0.02. So we'll set that back. So that's good news. Current, and this is out of uh, Harris, the peak current in a cyclic voltammetry trace is a constant, n raised to the 3 halves, so that's the number of electrons, the area of the electrode, the bulk concentration. So from this expression, we expect concentration to be linearly proportional <coughs> or yeah, to current. And in fact, it is in this simulation. We also expect there to be a dependence on the diffusion coefficient to the 1 half, and that's going to be d. So if I take my diffusion coefficient and I double it, I would expect the current to go up, but not to double, but to go up as the the square root. So it's now at 5, and we're up at around uh, 6.5 to 7. And you'll notice the shape of this curve changes fairly dramatically due to diffusion. The beak of the bird uh, gets taller as the diffusion coefficient gets larger. And that's because we're able to transfer more iron 3 to that surface. Let's go all the way up to 0.2. And at this point, this is almost like a rotating disk experiment. We're able to transfer iron 3 to the surface of the electrode fast enough that we reach a pretty much a steady state plateau. And we'll come back to 0.02. Back to our CV plot. And finally, we can play around with scan rate. If I scan twice as fast by making my time step twice as fast, so that's just a numerical trick. Um, we'll see what happens. We expect the current to go up because of this v squared term. So let's make it go up. It's now at about six point, it's around seven microamps, and boom, up we go, and we're up around ten microamps. And why does that occur? It occurs because we're able to move quickly down to regions. We're moving more rapidly down along this curve, and so we get to higher electron transfer rates um, before we run out of iron at the surface of the electrode. So we, this peak is higher, and this peak um, is is lower um, because we've used up more of the more of the iron. We, we can't. Uh, so so there is a, a relationship between this shape, peaks get higher, this peak gets lower. We can send it back and check that out. Now, see, the peak here has moved down and, and up as we change the time. So anyway, that gives you an idea of the two fundamental processes that are involved in, in reversible cyclic voltammetry traces. We have electron transfer at the beginning of the curve. We have mass transfer at the end. And our reverse trace uh, also is influenced by both of these parameters. What's nice about this model is it is completely consistent with the theoretical basis 
for uh, the CV trace. Um, it predicts the peak height. The only thing that my simulation doesn't quite do is get the separation between the two peaks. Um, mine's about 20 millivolts difference. <coughs> and theory says for a reversible reaction, they should be about 60 millivolt 